Meryl from DiffBot here, and today we're going to take a look at the most prominent natural language API products. How are they similar, and how do they differ? The aim here is to hopefully jumpstart your search if you're looking to build a project utilizing a natural language tool, and give you some bearings in the ever-changing landscape of NLP services. First off, what is a natural language API? At their simplest, natural language processing APIs are services that allow you to pass unstructured natural language corpora to them. They then process this natural language with the aim of returning structured data based on the underlying text. NL APIs utilize machine learning to hone their ability to process text. Some services offer the ability to train your own model, while others are pre-trained. NL APIs can be general, applied to a wide range of text types, or specialized. For example, NL API is meant to mine into user reviews or medical records. The types of structured data fields that are typically returned by NL APIs often include a selection of the following. Entities present in the text, facts, relationships between entities, the sentiment of entities or the document as a whole, the salience of entities, that is, how central the entity is to understanding the text, brand or product mentions, topic tagging, text or sentence similarity, and the location in the text where each of these elements is present. Some additional features you may find bundled or paired with NL services include APIs for writing text, summarizing natural language documents, language translation, text completion, semantic search, or simply extracting raw text from file formats or locations where the text is hard to get at. So who are some of the major players in natural language APIs? Unsurprisingly, some big tech names are present. There are uh, many other organizations who have also created non-commercially available NL APIs, but in this guide, we're going to look at commercially available tools. In particular, we'll look at the following. Uh, these are all heavily benchmarked offerings, including Amazon Comprehend, OpenAI's GPT-3, Watson Natural Language Understanding, Microsoft Azure's NL Services, Google Cloud's NL API, and DiffBot's NL API. To start off, I want to single out a few services for if you're looking for a creative NL API. That is, one that creates content, translates, or responds to prompts. Then your options for right out of the box services include OpenAI's GPT-3, Amazon Lex, and Microsoft Azure Translator. Also of note is if you're trying to understand or structure data in a variety of languages, but translation isn't your primary objective, then all of the options we're looking at today support most major languages. So with this use case aside, we can dive into how all of these providers handle extracting meaning from and structuring natural language input. First off, the basic output of many of these services is similar. I have on my screen the results of a Google Cloud natural language API call. Notice how it pulls out entities from a snippet of a wiki article. Also included is sentiment for all of these entities, what part of speech each portion of the underlying text is, and what general topic category the text is in. We're now looking at DiffBot's natural language API demo, and you can see a similar set of fields, including entities with sentiment and salience, different facts, and in this case, the ability to provide custom taxonomies. So this type of result is relatively standard across the major providers. Uh, in all likelihood, results are sent as an array of JSON objects, and they'll contain things like entities, sentiment, mentions, relationships between entities, many of these standard fields. So how should we go about judging between these services? Well, it turns out there are pretty well-established benchmarks for a range of things you should be looking for. The fields most commonly established by benchmarks include entity recognition, entity linking, relation extraction, and entity sentiment. And it turns out that researchers at all these organizations developing NL API tools do go out of their way to publish how their product stacks up with one of these standard benchmarks in each one of these categories. For entity recognition, for example, uh, the benchmark of choice is CONLL 2003. Essentially, this is a Reuters newswire text uh, that a natural language product parses and is then graded on how well it can pull out a variety of entity types, including persons, locations, organizations, and miscellaneous entities. 
Um, because these benchmarks are so well regarded, research teams really go out of their way to get these results to the public on how all their products stack up. I'll include links to these studies below the video, but uh, we'll also look through a summary view in the following screen. So this is essentially how all these major products stack up. For the four categories of benchmarks mentioned, we can see the latest results. And in three of the four categories, DiffBot's NL API is the clear winner. And in entity recognition, Amazon is slightly in the lead. So we've talked about how the first benchmark of entity recognition is measured, but what about the others? Entity linking is the task of recognizing an entity in text and linking it to the correct corresponding entity within a knowledge base. The most popular benchmark for measuring entity linking is the TAC KBP 2010. Uh, this is an important benchmark if you're trying to structure unstructured text in a way that augments your existing data stores. Relation extraction is the task of identifying relationships between entities in text. Relationships are commonly notated as triples, uh, basically a subject, an object, and a predicate. This is an important natural language function if you're trying to build out a graph database, or if you want to pull out a chronology uh, of relationships, or if you want to analyze complex interactions between entities. And the common benchmark here is KnowledgeNet 2019. Now, entity sentiment is relatively new and refers to the ability to provide a sentiment score for individual entities rather than uh, the document as a whole. So there are a range of benchmarks that can be applicable here, but they tend to cluster around specific uses. Uh, for example, pulling out perceived product quality in reviews. While these benchmarks are a great starting point for assessing the strengths of a natural language service, there are definitely other considerations. Uh, each benchmark is built around a specific type of natural language text. If the natural language you want to process um, or that you want to pull results from is substantially different, your results will vary. So this leads us to a second component that should be considered when choosing an NL API product, uh, specialized applications of NL APIs. Now let's say you want to parse medical records for patients. These are records that are sometimes written in shorthand and contain all sorts of medical and pharmaceutical terminology. A performant NL model in this text likely wouldn't be what you would want to use for detailed legal document NLP. So basically there are two routes to fine tuning an NL API product for your domain of interest. First is to find an NL API provider that enables you to train their NL product with a text type of your choice or the ability to provide examples of custom fact types or text taxonomies. We've labeled the providers that enable this in the farthest right column on the screen. And this process will look different uh, depending on the provider you choose, but basically this means that you can refine their existing tech for your use case of interest. A second route for fine-tuning an NL API product for your domain uh, is that some NL API providers offer pre-trained models meant for individual domains of interest. The most common example of this is a health record tuned NL API product. While there are specialized NL providers, uh, among this list only one provider offers a standalone pre-trained model, and in this case uh, it's focused on medical records. To recap, there are a few questions one should address when comparing natural language products. Uh, first, is your natural language use case generative or to do with translation? Um, secondly, how well does the NL product perform at common benchmarks like entity recognition, entity linking, relation extraction, and entity sentiment? And third, do you need a product that can be custom or is pre-trained around your unique natural language documents? Thanks for tuning in. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe to continue following our natural language web extraction and knowledge graph coverage here at DiffBot.